Let's return to our encore message from Warren Wearsby, back to the Bible's on-air teacher from 1980 to 1990. Up next, Warren shares how the mirror of God's Word reflects our desperate need for His grace. Now, the Word of God is a mirror not only for examination, but it is a mirror for restoration. Now, you and I cannot wash our faces in the mirror. The mirror shows us how dirty we are, but you don't wash in the mirror. And yet, the Word of God is a mirror for restoration. When we look into the Word of God as a mirror for examination, we see ourselves. For restoration, we see the grace of God. Turn to Exodus chapter 38 and verse 8, speaking about Moses in Exodus 38 verse 8. He made the laver of bronze and its base of bronze from the bronze mirrors of the serving women who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Now, these bronze mirrors were very precious to these women. Women need their mirrors. They do want to look beautiful. And we husbands want our wives to look beautiful, don't we? Here Moses takes the bronze mirrors, melts them down, and makes the laver. Now, this laver was a great big brazen bowl, and there was water in it. And the priests and the Levites, as they served in the tabernacle, became dirty. They became defiled. You're handling animals and blood and all kinds of things. And there was no floor in the tabernacle, so their feet became dirty. And God made it very clear that they had to keep clean. In fact, it was a matter of life and death. In Exodus chapter 30, uh, verse 18, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, you shall also make a laver of bronze with its base also of bronze for washing. You shall put it between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it, for Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet in water from it. When they go into the tabernacle of meeting or when they come near the altar to minister to burn an offering made by fire to the Lord, they shall wash with water lest they die. That's a matter of life or death. So they shall wash their hands and their feet lest they die. Now, here's an interesting thing. They didn't get dirty by running around and sinning. We commonly think of defilement coming from sin. They were defiled by serving. Here they were serving the Lord and serving the people in the tabernacle. People came with their sacrifices and offerings. And the priests and Levites would end up with soiled hands and soiled feet. But you cannot serve God with soiled hands and soiled feet because uh, it's a matter of life or death. Be ye clean who bear the vessels of the Lord. That's what God says. Therefore, they had to wash. Did you ever stop to realize that even while we are serving the Lord, we can become defiled? While we're preaching, teaching, singing, uh, leading a Sunday school class, witnessing, it's possible even while we're serving the Lord to be defiled. That's why it's important regularly that we come to the laver of the Word of God for cleansing. Now, God has several ways of cleansing his people. Sometimes he uses blood. Sometimes he uses fire. Certain objects were put through the fire. Other objects were sprinkled with blood, and that removed the defilement. In this case, it's water. Now, in the Bible, water for drinking is a picture of the Holy Spirit. Water for washing is a picture of the Word of God. Our Lord said to his disciples, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. John chapter 15, verse 3. The washing of water by the word, says Paul in Ephesians chapter 5. And so the word of God is compared to water for cleansing. Now I can't explain this. It's the work of the Holy Spirit of God. All I know is this, when I read my Bible and let it penetrate my mind and my heart, When I meditate on it and live in it, the Holy Spirit of God cleanses my heart and my mind. There's the renewing of the mind, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Now, I can't explain this. All I know is that there is power in the Word of God. And the Word of God comes through my mind and my heart like water. And there is a cleansing that goes on. In the Word of God, there are three admonitions that have to do with our cleansing. In uh, Psalm 51, 
verse 2, David prays, wash me. Now he repeats this down in verse 7, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. When we come and confess our sins to the Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And God answers that prayer, wash me. But then God goes on to say to us in Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 16, wash you, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do good. You see, I come and say, now, Lord, I have sinned and forgive me and I confess my sin, wash me, and he does. Then he says to me, why were you there? You shouldn't have been there. You wouldn't have sinned if you hadn't been there. Why did you read that book or watch that TV program? Or why did you get involved in that conversation? Wash you. There's a similar admonition in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Therefore, having these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. It doesn't say ask God to cleanse you. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, that's the negative, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, that's the positive. Wash you, cleanse yourselves. That means I have to go through my library and take out the books God doesn't want there. I have to go through the record collection and take out the music God doesn't want there. I have to go through the magazine rack and get rid of the magazines God doesn't want there. I have to control the radio dial and the TV dial to make sure I'm not looking at and listening to things that grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Wash you. Now, the Word of God guides us in this. The Word of God enables us to have discernment, to know. And when we come to the Word of God, the Word of God is a mirror for examination, showing us what is wrong in our lives. It's also a mirror for restoration. We are cleansed by the blood of Jesus as far as the record is concerned. But as far as the inner man is concerned, the Holy Spirit of God uses the Word of God to bring about cleansing and restoration. That means that immediately after we've confessed our sin, let's turn to the Word. The Word as a mirror for examination shows us where we're dirty. And the mirror as the laver for restoration enables us to become clean. Wash me, wash you. But there's a third admonition, wash one another. John chapter 13, Jesus said, If I, then your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, John 13, 14. A picture of humble service, ministering one to another. We should wash one another's feet. We should help other Christians keep clean. How do you do that? Through the Word. When you share the Word of God with other people, you're encouraging them to live a clean life. People don't need good advice. They need good news. People need the good news of the Word of God. You find some believer who's fallen into sin, he's gotten dirty, take him to the Word of God. Let him confess his sin to the Lord and then take him to the Word of God. Help to wash his feet. Help to bring him back, bring her back to a place of a clean walk with the Lord. But don't just wash the feet. In Acts chapter 16 and verse 33, I read that the Philippian jailer who had just been born again the same hour of the night took Paul and Silas and uh, he washed their wounds. He washed their stripes. He had had them beaten. He had been guilty of the stripes that were on their backs. But after he got saved, he went and got some water and he washed their wounds. Have you ever done that? Have you ever gone up to a believer you have wounded and washed the wounds? Oh, we'd have revival in our churches if people would just get to one another and say, you know, brother, you know, sister, I'm sorry for what I said about you. I'm really sorry for the wounds I caused you, and these wounds have been festering, and they've been infecting the body of the Lord Jesus Christ here, and, and I'm sorry about it, and I want to wash the wounds. Have you ever done that? Oh, it's a humbling thing to do. I've had to do it, but I tell you, friends, it works. The Word of God is a mirror for examination. Let's look into it and then when we see what needs to be done, let's do it. 
Let's not be just hearers of the word. Let's be doers of the word because the blessing comes not from the hearing, but from the doing. And the word of God is a mirror for restoration. Oh, let's use the word of God for cleansing our own hearts and minds. Let's remember that God says, wash you. Clean up your own life. Get those things out that don't belong there. And wash one another's feet and wash one another's wounds. Oh, what revival could come to the people of God if only we were clean. And he gives us the word of God that we might be clean before him. Now today, let's not just be hearers. Ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do? That's what Paul asked. What do you want me to do? Because if you want the blessing from the word, go out and do it. Thanks for joining us for Back to the Bible. Wouldn't it be nice to have a reminder of God's presence, of his promises to you and his word? Well, that's what you get with GoTandem. GoTandem is a mobile app that walks with you throughout your day, bringing customized Bible content to your smartphone or email. Whatever you need to focus on, from overcoming temptation to building healthy relationships, GoTandem can help by bringing God's word into your life throughout your day. So download GoTandem to your smartphone today. Just look for GoTandem. That's Go, T-A-N-D-E-M. Have you ever been afraid? Listen to these words from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek.